Okay. Okay. To put it in back gears, first of all, there's two levers up here. I forgot to mention this is the spindle brake. I know we've got a glare there. That's the spindle brake. Uh, this lever here, if you turn it there at about uh, 90 degrees to what it was, and then we've got another knob right here that says in and out. Uh, out means you're not in the, in the back here, so I'm going to uh, pull that, and uh, you got to rotate that and click it into the in position. Now, when we turn the motor on, we're going to be in back gears. I know the camera's moving around, but the, that's what i got to do. See how slow the speed is? But when you have it in back gears, you have to run it in reverse. Notice that's running backwards. So we, now we've got it in reverse to give us uh, forward rotation. Don't forget that. You've got to run it in reverse when you have it on back in back gears. You know, a lot of these things are not explained in a manual or a book. That's why I'm taking so much time to explain that. Now, to take it out of back gears, it's just the opposite. Move this back to the uh, out position and this lever like that. But I don't like to turn it on yet. I like to rotate this with my hand until you hear it click in, into uh, position. Uh, so you don't get a horrible noise when you turn the motor on. So that's how to change the speeds on a J-head. I have the original Bridgeport manual right here, which is handy, but I venture a guess that many of you do not. But there's a lot of information in there about uh, heads and not a whole lot on how to operate the machinery, but uh, complete parts lists and everything that you would need. Now, if you don't have this and you need any parts, this outfit here called uh, H&W Machine Repair and Rebuilding out of Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne, Indiana is a real good outfit. I have ordered parts from them, and, and uh, they're very reputable. And when I ordered the parts, they sent me a CD, which is more or less their catalog. So that's nice and handy. But they do have that all on their parts uh uh, or their website, which is www.machinerypartsdepot.com. Take a look at that, and they have all of the parts breakdowns and exploded views right there on their website. Uh, so anything you need in the way of parts is available from them, uh, but uh, everything is uh, premium price. Don't expect to get these parts for nothing, but yet they are uh, very high quality parts, and that's just what machine parts cost. So do parts for your Toyota. Well, you don't need parts for Toyota. So do your parts for your GM cars. They're very expensive. All right, let's talk about some of the feed mechanisms here on the J-head. If you're just doing a drilling, you can, of course, just use this like you would a drill press. And this comes off easily so that it doesn't hit you in the head when you're using the other feed. But if you're doing boring and you want to use this, you need to uh, turn, and I don't know the name of, of all of these levers, but uh, take this lever, whatever it's called, and move it into that position. And then your hand wheel is activated and you can raise and lower your quill with the hand wheel. Okay? And that will disengage it. Also, the hand wheel pulls right off, so it's out of your way if you don't want to use it. Now, another important part is this knurled knob here that was right between the, uh, well, in the hub of that wheel that I just took off. And that has three positions, in and out, and then a neutral position. That is the reversing uh, mechanism uh, for the direction of travel of the quill. Sometimes these are broken off. You may uh, have one that's broken off you didn't even know it belonged there. This uh, lever allows you three different uh, choices of um, speeds at which the quill will, uh, will move down or up uh, when you're on automatic feed. And let's see, I can't even read the bottom one there. It's, uh, that's three. So you got three thousandths per uh, revolution movement and one and a half and six. 
three is about the middle one and that works real good most of the time so just leave that in the in the three until you get used to uh, how to operate this this is kind of complicated if you don't use it every day now on the other side here we've got another lever and it says disengage feed worm when not in use so that's so you don't wear out the gears and then it says stop machine before engaging the feed worm well right now we have it in the uh, in position but if you want to disengage it it would be over on that side but we're going to use it so we'll engage it right there and I'm going to turn the machine on now and show you how to operate those controls now when you're doing that make sure that your quill lock is unlocked or you can damage something the motor is running now notice that uh, this is rotating because I pull this out now when I push it uh, in or rather I had it all the way in I pulled it all the way out notice that this uh, is turning in the opposite direction if you have it in the middle position it stops so I pulled it out neutral and then all the way in now that's why I took the crank off because that can come around that crank handle will come around and hit you in the head now when you uh, move this lever that is what will turn or engage the power feed so I'm going to pull it to the left and now the quill is feeding down slow enough so you may not be able to notice that and of course you can turn it off by pushing it in or reverse it if you want to if you're boring and you want to feed up why now we're going the other way and it's speeding up pretty nice huh now yet one more feature and that's the depth you can set your automatic depth stop with these nuts here but it takes a long time to run those all the way up the thread I like this little uh, quick acting one which you can move quickly any place you want on that screw so I'm going to move it right there so we got about a half inch of travel and now I'll engage the feed now notice when this comes down and touches it you'll hear a clicking and it automatically clicked off to a certain depth so that you don't run into your vise or that's for when you complete your cut you, you could even walk away from the machine if it's a real long slow cut I'm not sure why I'm even showing you this but now I'm sitting on my basement steps and I'm on the back side of the bridge port and this is the opposite end of the ram now I've got this uh, bracket mounted on there for my digital readout but there's a large hole here and the purpose of that is remember I showed you what the turret was well you could turn this entire turret 180 degrees I've got too many shelves and things in the way but there are other attachments that go on this that you can get from Bridgeport uh, namely one is a little slotting device uh, something you would very seldom use but you do see those and that's why the turret can move all the way around be sure and keep these belt guards on at all times and there are other various places to uh, 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 lubricate the machine we got a big oiler here and here and then you know read the manual and look around the machine and you can see what needs to be oiled you don't want anything to go wrong with your head because if you ever have to take one of these apart uh, which I never have but I've done some repairs on them uh, there's just a million little parts in there and it's not something you want to do by the way that company that I just told you about a few minutes ago does complete head repair work where you can send the head in and uh, but that would cost you an arm and leg as well but I'm sure they do a great job I think I've taken it through all of the parts I might have missed something I hope I didn't and I hope this was useful this is Tubal Kane signing out for now